OK, so we all learn in school what square roots are, but what are triangular roots? Well, if we go back to quite a basic understanding of what a square root is, if you arrange some dots into a square pattern like these, the square root of the total number of dots is just telling you how wide or how tall this picture is. So the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2 because this is a 2 by 2 drawing, and the square root of 9 is 3 because this is 3 by 3. We can do something very similar for triangular roots then. So we'd say the triangular root of 1 is just 1. The triangular root of 3 would be 2 because this is 2 dots wide and also 2 dots tall. And similarly the triangular root of 6 would be 3 because this is 3 dots wide. Or you can think of it as 3 dots tall. So there's a lot of interesting structure we can uncover looking at triangular roots. And to get started we're just going to look at there's a formula for the nth triangular number. So like how there's a formula to find the nth square number, this one's very straightforward. So the nth square number, we can call this Sn, is just n squared, or n times n. And if you want to find what is the nth triangular number, we can call this Tn. You might know this, this is a half times n times n plus 1. And to understand where this is coming from, we can just take our drawings of triangles, and instead of drawing them as equilateral triangles, we could draw it instead as a right angle triangle like this. And then we can also draw in another copy of this above and to the right of our original triangle. So now we've got two copies of our triangle just drawn slightly differently. And then the total number in this picture here, you can see we've got a rectangle. And the height of this is going to be our n from before, like how tall our triangle was. And the width of this now, we've added an extra dot at the bottom, so the width here is going to be n plus 1. So you can see here then that the total number of dots in this individual triangle is a half of the total number of dots in the rectangle. So we get this a half n times n plus 1 formula for the nth triangular number. So now this picture works really well, and so do these, when we have an integer as our square or triangular root of a number. But just like with square roots, if we want to take, for example, the square root of 2, we don't get an integer, and it's not possible to draw two dots in a square arrangement like this. But with square roots, we can go to an area model of thinking about if we have a square and the area of this square is 2, then the square root is going to be the side length of this square. So the square root of 2 is about 1.414, this side length. So this is saying that the square root of 2 is this number, because the area would be 2 if we do 1.414 times itself. And we can do something quite similar to find the triangular root then, where we don't get an integer. So if we just look at, for a first example, let's look at the triangular root of 2. So our picture we're looking for now is this rectangle, where we've got the height of our rectangle is going to be n, and the width of our rectangle is going to be n plus 1. And we're trying to find the triangular root of 2. So we're not saying that the area of the rectangle is 2, we're actually just saying that the area of this little triangle here is 2. So the total area would actually be 4. So then this would turn into a matter of solving this equation. The area of this triangle, a half times n times n plus 1, would need to be equal to 2. And then we would solve this to find n, and this would give us the triangular root of 2. So this begs the question, can we do this in general? So could we find the triangular root of just any number x? So again, we could draw a very similar looking picture where we want x now to be the area of this triangle here. And we've got n is going to be this height here and we know that the width of the triangle is going to be n plus 1. So then we're solving the equation that the area of this triangle needs to be equal to x. So we're solving a half times n times n plus 1 needs to be equal to x, and then the solutions n would be our triangular root of x. And this is just a straightforward quadratic equation for us to solve. So we could multiply by 2 on both sides and expand the brackets. We get n squared plus n equals 2x. And then if we subtract 2x from both sides, we get this is equal to 0. And now we can solve this for n just using the quadratic formula. So our quadratic formula, we're going to have negative b, so negative 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, so 1 squared is just 1, minus 4 times 1 times negative 2x. So we get a plus 8 times x there. And finally, we divide by 2a, so just dividing by 2. And this is what our n is, so this is what we can define the triangular root of x to be then using a formula. And here we would take, just like with a square root, by default we would take the positive answer to be our triangular root. 
But actually, if we consider the negative answer, something really interesting happens. So if we just look at some quick examples doing this, so if we take the triangular root of 6, we're going to have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 8 times 6 is 49. So you can see that square root's just going to become 7. So we get as our first root, the positive 1, negative 1 plus 7 over 2 gives us 6 over 2, which gives us 3. But then negative 1 take away 7 over 2, negative 8 over 2 gives us negative 4. And then if we look at the next triangular number, let's do the triangular root of 10. So we're going to have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 8 times 10. So we get the square root of 81, and this is all divided by 2. So we've got negative 1 plus 9 all divided by 2 gives us 4. And when we have negative 1 take away 9 divided by 2, we get negative 5. So you can see there's an interesting pattern there. We have almost the same number, but it's not quite as simple as with square roots, where you'd have the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. Here we can say that the triangular root of 6 is 3 and negative 4. The triangular root of 10 is 4 and negative 5. And there's quite a nice way of understanding this algebraically if we just consider the negative solution. So if we write out negative 1 minus the square root of 1 plus 8x all divided by 2. You can see this is almost the negative of the positive root. So if we write the positive root in here, negative 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 8x all divided by 2 in brackets. So you can see at the moment this doesn't actually match up. We've got the square root part matches, we've got the negative of that divided by 2, but on the left hand side we've got negative a half, and on the right hand side we've actually got positive a half. So as it's written these aren't equal, so to make this match the left hand side we need to turn that positive a half into negative a half, so we subtract 1. So this is a nice way of seeing why the negative root is almost the negative of the positive root, but then you have to subtract 1. And then there's also another way of understanding this, if you just think about substituting into our formula where we had a half times n times n plus 1. So if we do this where we had n is 3, for example, then we would have a half times 3 times 4, which gives us 6. But if we were to substitute then negative 3 in, we would have a half times negative 3, but then when we have n plus 1, negative 3 plus 1 gives us negative 2. You can see this doesn't give us 6, which is what we're looking for. And you'd actually have to go down to n is negative 4 to make this work. So you go to a half times negative 4 times negative 3. And this would work then. This would be equal to a half times 3 times 4. And similarly for the triangular roots of 10, we can say that a half times 4 times 5, this is equal to a half times negative 5 times negative 4. You can see that the role of the 4 and 5 have swapped there when we go to the negative. And speaking of negatives, you probably know that it's not possible to take the square root of a negative number without having to use imaginary or complex numbers. So what about triangular roots? Well, let's try and take the triangular root of negative 1 eighth. So we're going to substitute into our formula x is negative an eighth. So we get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 8 times negative an eighth just gives us 1 minus 1 or 0 inside our square root. And this all gets divided by 2. So there's actually just the one solution here, negative a half, because we're adding and subtracting 0. So we'll just let that sink in for a moment. That we've taken the triangular root of a negative number and we've got a real solution. So unlike with square roots, it seems like we can take the triangular root of a negative without having to use imaginary or complex numbers. So does this work for all negatives? Well, if we look at the formula for the triangular root of x, you can see here we would still need 1 plus 8x to be non-negative, because otherwise we would be going into imaginary or complex numbers there. So we need 1 plus 8x to be greater than or equal to 0, or equivalently we need 8 to, x to be greater than or equal to negative 1 eighth. So this is actually the lowest we can go, negative an eighth, before we would then have to start using imaginary or complex numbers to find the triangular root of a negative number like that. And there's quite a nice way of seeing this just by drawing a graph. So if we have a graph of on the x-axis we'll put n, and on the y-axis we'll have y equals a half times n times n plus 1. You can see we've got a root when n is 0 and another when n is negative 1. 
looking like this. But then the quadratic for a half times n times n plus 1 does dip below the x-axis here. So we get this minimum point actually where x is negative a half or where n is negative a half. And this is the example we've just looked at, that the triangular root of negative 1 eighth is negative a half. So we know that the minimum point over here is going to be negative one eighth. So this is quite a nice way of seeing this, that actually triangular numbers, this generalization of a half n n plus one, a half n n plus one can be negative, but it can only go down as far as negative one eighth. So unlike with square roots, where in order to get a real answer, the square root of x is real when x is greater than or equal to zero, we can actually take the triangular root of x and get a real answer so long as x is greater than or equal to negative one eighth. So we can say then that we can actually take the triangular root of a negative number as long as our negative number doesn't go beyond negative an eighth.